Hello there guys, welcome to another Axton build video. In today's video I'm doing a launcher build, but before I get into that, this will be the last build video that I do for a while, just because I'll be resetting my playthrough, so I can re-obtain some mission rewards that I want for future builds. But I won't be leaving you with nothing to watch, I'm because my one life gauge is now dead, finally. I will be starting a challenge run on Maya, just because it will be the first time I ever play her and I think a challenge run would be better than a normal run for that. I might also continue with my Krieg, trying to get him to OP10 or I might just start at a zero, because zero is a really good character as well. But anyway, now I'm going to get into the build video. First thing I want to say, this is where you can get the meteor shower from, like I used in the last video, this is also where you can get the sponge. The reason I'm showing that off here is because I used the sham, and if you if you ever give up with the sham farm, the sponge is here in this vendor. And it go, I believe it goes up to about 50% absorb chance. If it goes, I don't know, I, I don't know if it goes higher than that or not, I will uh, just... I'll chuck up on screen a screenshot of, uh, of what it says on uh, Loot Lemon. But yeah, I did use a low level Logan's gun with the sham to, reg to regen rocket ammo. You can see it's not the best sham. The best one is 94%, but that's, what, that's the one I was originally farming for. But then I got this one, I, then I decided that was good enough. So I've just gone with it. But yeah, low level Logan's gun because my Logan's gun would uh, just kill me instantly if I used it. And one thing I didn't notice about the Logan's gun until uh, until this build, it actually does four explosions total per projectile. I didn't even notice that before. Which means for one projectile you can regen four rocket ammo. As you just saw with my shield. Another interesting thing I found about I found out about the sham shield was well, not just the sham; it'll be any absorb shield. You can actually absorb the rocket volley that uh, Wilhelm uh, that Wilhelm sends towards you, which is weird because you can't absorb any other rocket volleys from like badass loaders or whatever. I just found that a bit weird, a bit a bit interesting as well. Use the slagger for slag, obviously. I'll get into the rocket launchers in a minute because I used more than just those two. I've already mentioned the sham. The expert veteran com. The reason you, the reason I went with this one is because it has plus six to steady, which means you're getting the maximum launcher damage possible. That mag size there, forty nine percent. That is accurate. The problem is though, because that's not fifty percent. This mag size would the mag size on the hive would be twelve if it said fifty, but because it's forty nine. It's only 11. But it's, it's still a 3 shot mag now, so it didn't really matter all that much. I did not change out my relic because just because I couldn't be bothered. The reload speed on this com actually is actually bugged. The actual reload speed, I believe, is 65%. I'll put a screenshot from Loot Lemon on the screen so you can see. I believe it was Demonite that found that out. Just a normal singularity grenade, my favourite type of grenade in the game. Right, now onto the rocket launchers, I use the Hive. Bit of an interesting choice. If you've never used the Hive before, or never heard of it, or never seen it in action, the um, that 17 million might seem a bit low, but when you shoot it, it sends an orb, and the orb sends out numerous, like, sort of, uh, needles which then deal damage to enemies and that's why that 17 million damage is actually a lot for this. I also use the bunny. A lot of people would, pretty much everyone actually would say this is a really bad launcher because you know it's the bunny. It's not actually that bad of a launcher, it's actually pretty good if you know how to, if you know how to use it so it's actually just a skill issue if you think this is bad. And actually, I'm willing to. I'm actually very confident in saying that most people that say this is bad have never even used it before. 
I feel very confident in saying that. Anyway, to the other launchers I used, I did not use the Ahab. Or I think I used the Tunguska like, I think I fired like three shots from it. That was it. But yeah, anyway, I did not use the Creamer either. I did use the 12 pounder. This is a really good roll on 12 pounder. I wasn't even farming for this, I literally got it. I, was, I literally got it with like 10 to 15 minutes of farming a, what I would consider to be a good enough roll, and I got this. So, I, so obviously I went with it. This actually is nearly as powerful as the Nukem. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The Nukem uses two ammo per shot, this usually only uses one. I would say this is better than the Nukem. Though, of course, the Nukem has uh, the advantage of, you know, the Nukem does have an advantage over this, over the uh, 12 pounder though. Because with the Nukem, you can just fire in an enemy's general direction and it will hit them. However, with this, it's a lot different. Because you have to be extremely accurate with this to hit enemies. Yeah, because uh, the blast radius isn't that much, honestly. And the, as you saw, it shoots it shoots cannonballs actually, and it ricochets once before it ricochet, it can ricochet once before exploding. So yeah, you do have to be like very accurate with this, which means Gage can't use it, which is pretty good in my book. I think I only used one other launcher. Which was a fire top near, but I did get rid of that. I did get rid of it to make space for the 12 pounder. However, the top near is very easy to farm. I got mine from the snowman chest. I think I believe the DLC is actually called Marcus's Mercenary Day. But yeah, I just got it from that chest. The boy was off for this. I'm gonna quickly go over the skills. This is pretty much no, what I normally do, except for this. This is usually maxed out, however, I wanted steady maxed out, so I just took two points from that, chucked it in steady. I did notice a little, there is a little bit of a difference between, uh, of course, the swap speed zones are going to be a bit lower, that's what I noticed. Which is annoying, because it means you can't fight your weapon as quickly when, as quickly when you do swap. But you know, it's, it's, it's fine, because rocket launchers deal a ton of damage. That grenade damage isn't really necessary here. Recoil doesn't matter either. But yeah, that rocket launcher damage is what I was really going for. I went with Nuke again just because it's such a fun skill. Slag turrets as well, just because slag turrets very, very simple. I think this build would actually be better with a double turret setup. Uh, however, I did not test that. That doesn't matter. I said the only kill skill that actually mattered was onslaught because because of the movement speed. This kind of real. This kind of did not matter at all. Of course, no points in health here because I'm not using because this com doesn't boost it, so that point is instead in quick charge. I would usually have a couple points in pressure, however. Since the com was boosting this, I decided now screw it, I'll just chuck the point in that, max that one out instead. So I get a lot more movement speed and damage in Fight for Your Life. Which I bel I'm not sure if the damage was, no no, yeah, the damage definitely came in handy once or twice. Movement speed, I'd say, is, is, I'd say movement speed I'd say is arguably more important than the damage. Got Phalanx Shield, I, do, never, I never spec my Glock, but but with Maglock, you can make your turret stick to any surface, base, pretty, well, pretty much any surface. So you could put it up there, for example, if you wanted to. So it's out of sort of harm's way, if you want, if you if you need it to be. So in a way, Maglock is also a durability skill, like Phalanx Shield. But I just prefer Phalanx Shield. Resourceful, obviously, because cooldown rate. Grit, really good skill. Especially if using something, well, especially if, especially with the sham actually, because it's got literally no capacity. 
So if you're dealing with dot damage, yeah, grit's going to come in handy a lot. Uh, willing is just, it is what it is. I'm not sure able was entirely needed here because, I mean, I was dealing that much damage, enemies were dying quite quickly, so, but well, very quickly. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if this was actually needed, but it certainly helped. Same with this, definitely helps with the sham. In conjunction with uh, quick charge, it keeps the sham up, keeps the sham up a lot more, which is very good, it's very very helpful. Again, boy, was off. I believe I've gone through everything that I've that I used, and let's actually get into the gameplay right now. I just want to very quickly mention this build would have also worked with the big boom blaster like you can see on screen now. Uh, this is the, the this is the best roll that you've seen on screen. Uh, it's a screenshot. It's just a couple of screenshots put together from Loot Lemon. So if you do want to farm for that, go ahead. It will it will work with this build because the boosters that it drops supplies you with one grenade and one rocket ammo. Which is very good. I also I also wanted to quickly show the twelve pounder compared with the Nukem. You can see the Nukem only does about four million more damage for an extra ammo cost for the uh, the cost of one extra ammo per shot. These are what Luke Lemon considers to be the god rolls for these weapons. The average player would probably try and go for the maximum amount of damage on both for the best you know for the best roll, obviously. Of course, that's just the average player, but yeah, you can see the uh, you can see the stat difference between them. Of course, because the Nukem uses two ammo and the twelve pounder uses one ammo, they are both a two shot mag each. But they are both good launchers. And now on to the actual gameplay here. I did in this map here. This is what I'm finding it. In this map, I did mostly well, not mostly. I used the the hive and the bunny for this map and the bunny is uh, well it can kill it can kill very easily in fact of course there I just run forward just to spawn in more of the enemies This is certainly not a perfect hive. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the bunny actually when you uh, use it. Because it's not all the time, but quite a lot. It does have like a secondary explosion even after hitting an enemy, like the uh, like the baby maker has. Yeah, you will see me using the uh, Logan's gun to with the sham a lot in this. Wait, very quickly, one thing I think I've got to mention, the hive is 4 ammo per shot. I might, I might have already mentioned it, but yeah, just, just in case I did forget. But yeah, the bunny is a good launcher. From what I was saying before about the hive, it's certainly not the perfect roll. But honestly, it was literally the first OP-10 one I got. So I decided, screw it, I was just going to go with it. And that's why the bunny is a good launcher, you see? A bit practically one-shotted that enemy. There was like a smidge of health left. But the bunny does also have a big blast radius, so if you fire it, so if you just like reload it into a group of enemies, you can potentially kill an entire group all at once. Of course I did throw out my turret a lot just because even though I am using the sham. It's not a hundred percent chance to absorb the bullets, so I'm not very tanky. So maybe it's a good thing that I couldn't be bothered to change my uh, my relic. I 
I'm not sure how the homing uh, needles from the Himes projectiles actually home in on enemies. I'm not sure if they horn, home in on the nearest enemies or if they just home in on enemies that you're currently aiming at. I don't know exactly how that works. Yeah, this gun loader was trying to run away from me for some reason. Don't know why. So obviously I chased him down with the bunny because the bunny. I kill, I'm pretty sure I killed Hurley with only the bunny in this run, actually. One thing I should mention is all but one TDO kill on this on this character I've gotten with the bunny. That one TDO kill that I got without the bunny, I think it was just a random TDO weapon. Because it was just for the achievement of hitting, well, killing and flying enemy. Yeah, shout out the hive. And uh, yeah, that, that battle's loader goes down very, very fast. I don't really see anyone using the hive actually, but yeah, it is a really good launcher. Highly recommend it. Though you have to farm sand from for it though, so there is that. It's a shame it can't pretend, it's a shame it can't world drop. Like the invader can. Yeah, I did try to use the bunny as much as possible just to. Because I'm trying to convince people it's actually a good launcher. And honestly, I doubt anyone. I doubt anyone will actually be convinced by it. Because there was someone commented on my video, I can't remember the name. It was my Logan's gun video. Even though the even though in the in that video you could clearly see the Logan's gun shredding, they were still saying oh it's a bad gun. Yeah th th there will always be people like that out there. They just refuse to accept a gun that they that they believe or they've been led to believe that is bad is actually good. I got a double kill in uh, with the bunny there. It is a good launcher, you just gotta know how to use it. And actually, if you let it bounce around long enough, it actually s does four or five sort of explosions. Which is uh, very, very powerful. Because I'm pretty sure those explosions do the amount of damage, like. The amount of damage that you know the, 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 like the actual reload would do if it if it didn't have the uh, you know the bunny effect. I'm not entirely sure how TDO reloads work. I believe it's how many how much ammo's left in the mag com times by the or multiplied by the damage. I think that's how it works. I'm not entirely sure. But I know it doesn't take into account multiple projectiles into that, into the damage equation. But yeah, I did use the hive and the bunny here only in this map. Though I do believe I did shoot the Tunguska two or three times. Just to see if it would actually do anything. And honestly, from just from those three shots, I think it's better on the explosive build that I did last time. Though maybe the loaders in this map are just tankier than the loaders, or more resistant than the loaders in other maps. Because some, sometimes enemies in different maps are slightly different. I don't know why that is, but it might just be that. You've got to be careful with that secondary explosion from the bunny because it is delayed. You can end up accidentally dying from it. Did I use the? I'm pretty sure I used the. Yes, I did use the bunny on this lava. Certainly, it's not certainly not a bad launcher. I think I'm pretty sure my turret finished it off then. But 
But yeah, the bunny is certainly not a bad launcher, it's just a skill issue. Of course, I wasn't using its full potential here because uh, I wanted to directly hit enemies to deal the damage a lot sooner. I think this is the, I think this is the bit where I used Tunguska a couple of times. Well, a couple of times. I'm pretty sure this is where I shot it three times. The hive is a good launcher, though. Really good launcher. Don't know why. I don't, I don't know why more people don't use it. Same with the bunny. Though I can kind of understand why most people don't use it, because they have been led to believe that it's a really bad launcher. Or maybe they've used it for themselves and just have a good time. But honestly, I actually do like it. I can't say it's my favourite TDO weapon, because it's, uh, it's the only actual unique TDO weapon. Not the only unique one, actually. It's the only TDO weapon I've actually used properly before. So yeah, I can't really, I can't say it's my favourite TDO because I need to use more TDO weapons for, uh, for, for before I can make before I can be, come to a decision on it. But the good thing about the bunny it comes in all elements, so so yeah, that's a good thing. So of course, if I got a crossing one, it'd be doing a lot more damage against these guys. are going to use the hive in a crowd like if you shoot it, if you fire it into a crowd I would suggest firing up firing up multiple of the orbs just because just because the the needles could home in on completely diff, completely different enemies and that could kind of mess mess it up like because it could actually kind of, kind of mess it up a little bit because then you won't be getting the maximum amount of damage per enemy Yeah, I see this uh, Lord coming at me. No, it stopped chasing me actually. Didn't even notice that when I was playing. Of course, the bunny bouncing around can be is easily influenced by the terrain that's around it, the, the environment basically. Which uh, does kind of ruin it. Oh, the reason I reloaded there, right? Because unlike other TDO weapons, TDO launchers do not consume the rest of the ammo in the mag for the reload. But it still takes into account the. But it still takes into account the leftover ammo from the mag into the damage equation that it does. At least, um, I believe that's how TDO reloads work. Again, I, I have no idea. I don't use TDO as much. Except for the bunny, of course. Yeah, I almost died here, but the, uh, but big W for the bunny here. That's why it's a big W. Got me a second wind while uh, just bouncing around in a. Uh, not really sure. Not really sure what the word is. So it just it kind of bounces around in any random direction depending on what it hits and what angle it hits it at. So you can actually you can actually control the bunny's reload to an extent, but yeah. 
depending on the environment and the terrain, it, it can be random, and most likely probably will be random. But even in maps with very uneven terrain, there are, there are still parts that have somewhat even terrain, or like even enough for the bunny to actually work. I'm not sure if I died here or not, or if that or if I died in only in the test. So I remember dying at some point. It might have only been in the testing. But yeah, I do remember dying at some point. These power loaders can't, can't uh, uh, reflect rocket rockets because that would be annoying. Yeah, you've also got to be kind of precise with the bunny, like like with the 12 pounder. Because uh, you can easily miss enemies with it. Yeah, that secondary explosion that the bunny sometimes does when it hits an enemy is, is, is very delayed. Yeah, for once I didn't open those chests, chests, or look in the vendor for ammo, because of course I'm using rocket launchers, and I'm using the uh, logan for three gun. Yeah, here I'm pretty sure I only use the hive because I'm just clearing out that. I just wanted to clear the room out as quickly as possible, which I, uh, which I did very, very quick. Yeah, Pervy has like no tankiness to him whatsoever. This run through Washburn Refinery, I believe, was around 20 minutes, which is about average for me. No, the quickest I've ever been through here is uh, just under 14 minutes with the horn. I did want to show the hive actually bossing. So I'm, I will, I'll show that later in the video. But for um, but for Hurley, I used the bunny. Yep, hot loader goes down in one, no matter well, regardless of the level, because. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of explode very, very easily, like the explorers do. I was expecting a badass loader at this door here, right next to that um, corrosive barrel. But it spawned behind me, so I just waited for it to sort of come down the stairs a little bit there. I think I blocked it with my turret. Never mind, I did not. Because sometimes that sometimes that lord of there will will treat back up the stairs like it's trying to do now. Which is a little bit annoying, if I'm honest. But yeah, the hive easily dismantled this guy. Don't even know why I'm slagging when I'm uh, I've got my turret out. Maybe it's just a force of habit. About to fight Hurley now. Believe it or not, I did actually die to this guy in uh, testing because I did get very cocky and tried uh, <laughs> and just didn't stick to cover. But I very, very quickly learned my lesson. <laughs> Even if you're very comfortable with a map, do not get cocky. So I might have actually shot the hive a couple times there. I think I did actually. Yeah, I did. 
But I think I ultimately decided just to use the bunny for it. Yeah, you just saw the bunny's uh, project, like sort of uh, path get easily influenced by the uh, terrain because the actual road is a little bit further uh, raised up than the actual ground. The reason I threw out my turret there is just to get the aggro off me because the turret is very good for aggro relief. There you go. The bunny can boss, even though her elite is an easy boss. But still, the, it, it can boss. Pretty sure I found a leech in this chest, actually. Yeah, I did. Because I noticed that as I was just shooting the Logan's gun at my feet. I was kind of in shock for a second then, but because it's the leech, I just walked away from it. Maybe I'll do a video where I use the leech. Another W for the bunny right there. It killed me, but killed the enemy. It's, but killed the enemy just after. Anyway, I think I used the top here next. Let's have a look at that. I'm actually in Lynchwood for once. Honestly, Lynchwood is my favourite mobbing map in the entire game. And I use nothing but the top near here for dealing damage. I'm not going to show the top near off that much just because everyone already knows that the top near is really good. So I didn't really, I, so I didn't really see it. I don't really see any point in showing it off that, as, that much anyway. But yeah, the reason the top is so good is because unlike all other E-Tech launchers, it only uses one ammo per shot, like it's done E-Tech counterpart, and and, it, and because it's flat off, it has a chance to not consume any ammo, and because it is E-Tech, it means it's still getting the damage boost as if it was using two ammo per shot. But yeah, it is a really good launcher. Even though, oh yeah, I got this guy stuck in a knockback loop. Yeah, even though Lynchwood is my favorite mobbing map, I do, it is still really, you really should keep your distance, like, or try to. I'd say this map is real this map is really fun with snipers. Or if you just or if you just run in and gunning a Salvador. It is really, really fun. Even though I don't like Salvador, but still. Salvador Salvador, I just don't like him because he's too powerful. But yeah, this map is really good as Salvador. I might have went down a couple times. Yeah, I don't, this enemy just didn't want to be slagged for some reason. Of course, yeah, I did eventually slag him because the slagger is OP. Yeah, I was trying to figure out where that enemy was for a second. I'm not sure if he spawned up on top of that bridge and jumped down or if he spawned in a little hall. Yeah, I got got here got trapped by my turret, which was uh, kind of panicking a little bit because I thought that midget was uh, it was a suicide midget, so I was trying to like so I was like trying to get away. But it was just a normal uh, it was just normal midget psycho. Of course, if you fight the top near close enough to yourself, you regenerate rocket ammo, so it kind of makes the uh, the Logan's gun 
redundant for the redundant for the pro for this. But if you fire it too close to yourself, you, you will kill yourself. Anyway, yeah, like I said, I did get rid of this just because it's easy. To, it's really, really easy to get anywhere, and it's got a mellow on sight. I've just noticed that because uh, that means three out of the four launchers that I use have mellow on sight. Or is it mellow on sight is good though for um, for rocket speed? Well, any mellow on parts on a rocket launcher good for rocket speed, except. There's something like the pyrophobia if you want the explosions from that, well, the novas from it as it's travelling along to hit enemies. Speaking of the pyrophobia, I was going to use it, but it turns out I don't have it. Which is weird because I didn't sell mine. I didn't drop it anywhere, it's just gone. I don't know what, ha I, I, I don't know what happened to it. Couldn't be, I couldn't be bothered farming a new one for this. I will farm one eventually though. Well, and because of the reduced ammo per shot gimmick that a lot of launches have, it means you can potentially fire forever, technically. Even when you've got zero ammo in the mag, you can still potentially actually fire the weapon. I'm not going to show all of Lynchwood, I'm just going to show this like sort of this bit here, like sort of the, uh, the, the center of Lynchwood, where the train goes through. But yeah, the top here is just really good launcher. I think it was the only non-unique weapon, you know, yeah, it was the only non-unique weapon I actually used. I don't know what I was waiting for here. But yeah, I think I accidentally knocked that Marauder back into the... behind that shutter. I set care those two enemies so that I wouldn't get killed from behind. This is one of the only times. Might have only been the might might have even been the only time I actually went in towards combat without my turret at the ready. But then again, because I'm using the top near, I knew I'd probably be able to get myself buff anywhere. And I do not believe rocket launchers receive gun damage bonuses. I believe they only receive damage bonuses from things that boost launcher damage specifically. But yeah, after this, I did get rid of the top near and went and farmed a 12 pounder. Which you're about to see. But obviously, the first one we're gonna keep. I'm just gonna finish off these enemies. But yeah, you. But yeah, uh, you're about to see me using the 12 pounder. I'm starting to like. Uh, mobbing in Thousand Cuts. But yeah, here's where I'm using the, t the 12 pounder. Good rocket launcher. It's a shame it's not used more. The one thing I will say about it, you do have to be like insanely accurate with it. I 
do wish the mag size was higher though with this. But at least with Axon, the reload speed is as low as it can possibly be. Yeah, I'm surprised that corrosive dot didn't kill me. Because corrosive dots last the longest in this game. So an OP10 and corrosive dot is uh, 9 times out of 10, definitely lethal. Yeah, you see, I only just barely missed that Marauder. That's how accurate you need to be with this. Only, only just barely missing an enemy is enough to completely miss them. So yeah, that is a downside with this launcher, though I do, I, it, I do think it's still a cool launcher. I did also use the bunny a couple of times in this map, just because it's the bunny, and I like it. Wanted to shut off as much as possible, while also not in. I want to show off as much as possible whilst also not letting the uh, letting it be more well letting it be used more than the twelve pounder. And another reason to use the twelve pounder get to kill buzzards with it. I mean, you could kill buzzards with any launcher. Yeah, honestly, I was wondering where this buzzard went. It ended up, it ended up kind of causing itself into their uh, sort of canyon or ravine, whatever you want to call it. See, complete. It just, yeah. It kind of caused it into the into the. <laughs> Don't know why it did that, but it just did. Deploying sentry. I was honestly expecting enemies to just immediately show up after doing that, after throwing my turret out. But yeah, you'll see. You'll see me get a kill here. It felt really cool to do that. It's just a shame you have to be incredibly accurate with this damn thing. Yeah, I'd say have, I'd say yeah, the accuracy of this, or well, no, having to be incredibly accurate with this is the only downside to the to, to the twelve pounder. Other than that, I, other than that, I'd say it's like the top. I'd say other than that, I'd say it's a top tier rocket launcher. And also, I actually found out for myself, you don't actually need a twelve rocket launcher to do the flacker damage glitch. Which is weird because the first time I ever tried that, it didn't work with anything other than a Torg launcher. It's probably just the game, the game spaghetti card, like everything, like everything is when something doesn't work as intended, or it just doesn't work at all. Yeah, the sham's good with dealing with bullets, not dot damage. Again, I'm surprised it did not go down here. There's the slag looked challenge complete again. Yeah, that is bugged. I'm not sure if there's a way to fix it on console, but honestly, I can't be bothered. That's right. Yeah, hold on. How much did that do? I'm gonna have to double check that. Yeah, I've just checked, it did 116 million damage. 116 million is insane. Of course, it was, of course, because I was in Fight for Your Life, it was getting the, that damage bonus as on top. Because it is just a damage bonus rather than gun damage or melee damage. So it just boosts everything that does damage. 
equals that 44% from steady for rocket launchers. Yeah, it's still doing a lot of damage. What was that? That was like it looked like 90 million damage, I think, for a second. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. Yeah, I should want to see what a low level Logan's gun would do to that barrel. You can set it on fire, but can't actually explore it. Yep, I even missed the boomstick midget that was right in front of me with this. It's insane how accurate you need to be with the 12 pounder. Which I've said, I've already said multiple times, but yeah, that's. Honestly, I think that's its only weakness, just how accurate you need to be with it. So if you play Engage, ha! Huh, I found a weapon you can't use. Why am I saying that? No one plays Gage. There is no one that plays Gage. Yeah, but seriously though, for like for the f for the four Gage men that exist, you can't use the twelve pounder. I don't know why, but when enemies are behind cover, for some reason it's damn near impossible to actually pull them away from cover. Who designed that? Because it's like once they're in cover, they're just there, they're just stuck to the cover. Like sometimes you'll actually see them get dragged away from the cover, but instantly teleport back. I have no idea who the hell designed it like that, but it's stupid. Yeah, I checked. I checked back on the footage. I didn't. I did say I didn't use the Ahab. I did actually. I did actually accidentally fire it once. Not during any of these game. Not during any of the gameplay that we've seen so far. It was, the, it was just in the gameplay that I recorded for the outro where I accidentally fired it once. But speaking of the Ahab, because of its projectiles, I think it should I think it should be the only rocket launcher that should be able to crit. Just because its projectile is a lot thinner than pretty much every other rocket launcher projectile. I don't even know why I do that. I pick up Iridium or Torg tokens or Seraph crystals or even money. Actually, you might you not actually know. You automatically pick up money anyway. But yeah, Torg tokens, Iridium, and Seraph crystals. I don't even know why I pick them up. Even when I'm at full crystals or whatever. Even when I'm at full for each of those. I think I went for my turret here. I might have just run in. Yeah, I ran straight in, yeah. Yeah, I was contemplating which enemies to take down first, either the Goliaths or that buzzard. I decided for the I decided to go with the buzzard because my turret was just about ready. So I was frantically pressing the button. Yeah, I saw that then. The actual projectile from the twelve pounder did actually hit the buzzard. It's, it just went, it just kind of went through its hitbox. Borderlands 2, the game you play if you want to deal with the most spaghetti, the most amount of spaghetti cord in the universe.
Yeah, honestly, I think a 12 pounder would be really good with the damage prefix and all Mali one parts. Is there a badass challenge for killing buzzards with or flying enemies with launchers? I just saw it pop up on screen. I'll double check that. Now that badass challenge is just to kill enemies from long range with rocket launchers. Honestly, I thought that was pretty mid range when I killed that buzzard. But what the game decides is, you know, what is what the game decides. Yeah, that buzzard that's flying around, I completely ignored it because it kind of just flew off. Or at least I remember completely ignoring it. It might have flew back around. I might have killed it. No, no, it, flew, it did fly back around. But honestly, what, I'd, what I would consider the god roll for this is all melee one parts. And maybe one TDO part, like a TDO site, just for a bit of reload speed for if you're playing characters that aren't Axton. But if you are playing Axton, I'd say the god roll is damage prefix with all melee one parts for the maximum rocket speed. Just I think that would be the I, I just think that's the best version of it. Or would be the best version of it. I think that was over a hundred million damage again. But anyway, on to the boss kill with the hive. This fight took about three minutes, I think. And I found out something weird, actually, because it kind of links, but it kind of links to little gas masks um, challenge run where he, where he used only the nukem, and he he had emergency crutch items like a, like it was just a non-unique purple absorb shield. But yeah, he had one. He had a crutch item like that. To absorb rockets from enemies if he needed to, like if he really needed to absorb, you know, rockets, you know, for, to regen his rocket ammo. And he tr he tested if you could absorb the rocket volley from badass loaders, and he found out that you couldn't. Either that, you'll just get insanely unlucky because, as you'll see here, I absorb the rocket volley from Wilhelm. From Wilhelm. I, I, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's somehow different rockets to the Badass Loaders. But I will do a little bit of testing actually myself to see. Because he may have just gotten really unlucky. Yet yeah, this is a bad place to use the bunny because the. Uh... That's right. Yeah. The terrain just messes it up. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, I just saw the bunny then. It started to act like a rocket, like a proper rocket. I don't know why. I don't remember. Oh no, I did go down actually. But yeah, it's weird that you can absorb Wilhelm's rocket volley, but not the Ballast Lord's rocket volleys. Again, I will test it because, like I said, little gas mask could have gotten insanely unlucky with with it. But yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't understand that because shouldn't they just have the same rocket volley? I don't know why you can't pull some enemies around when they're uh, when they're doing whatever they're doing. Yeah, he absorbed another rocket there. I don't know why that. I still don't understand it. But yeah, I will do a uh, shorter video before this actual video. Just showing, just showing the, uh, just showing trying to absorb pro the rockets from badass loaders as well. If it does work, then it just means gas mask was incredibly unlucky. 
but anyway guys that is the end of this video hope you did enjoy if you did like be greatly appreciated also consider subscribing that would also be greatly appreciated and i'll see you in the next one whenever that is bye guys Jeez.